the Alliance is monitoring facilitation program. Our duty is, our mandate is to support the trade facilitation. And one of these um, is the support of the training on ICOMS. And since um, Trade Forward, is, ICOMS is a main platform where um, trade is made both around our various borders. We thought it wise to support um, institutions such as GIF to be able to train its members, to be able to give refresher um, courses. So this is one of our um, support, I should say, as well. Thank you all. Wish you all the best. Have a great session. My course, Grace, we've been able to do two years of ICOMS. Um, just this morning, I was saying the beauty of ICOMS is that you can work anywhere. I have my tablet here. I'll be working whilst here. And we thank God for that. There's been a lot, and there's been the need for us to update ourselves as they upgrade the system. So if we are here this morning, we are here for a refresher of some of the things we didn't understand, and an update of the things that they have put on that will help us work better. So I pray we all pay attention, someone gave me the word, so that at the end of the day, we'll go back very much filled with fresh knowledge that our work will be much easier. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, this is a refresher course um, we want to give to members so that they can be abreast with whatever is happening in ICOMS and then in the trade facilitation environment. I pray that whatever we are going to do today and for the rest of the week to we pay attention, absorb it, and go back so that some of the challenges that we are having, um, if not curtailed, will be minimized or reduced. I want to welcome everybody and have a good training session this day. We just want to bring contest to a few of the errors we make and then we'll see how we are doing. So this one will be touching on a few things. Um, we'll look at something called stakeholder, something management. We we'll look at the system notices, especially the updates we bring to you from time to time. Uh, we we'll look at the e-document validation, which we have seen already. And the document are excellent. We we'll look at what we've done with the e-use application. And then an introduction we have just done a few a few weeks back uh, on the reuse of rejected concentries and simple amendments. We will touch on the daily cancellation approval process. And there's, there's something we've added to the cancellation approval process. And we'll touch on that one. And then the reuse documents of the uh, reusing the council BOE for the BOE creation. We will look at the UCL, UCL release and UCL skip request. Important in March. Uh, we will just highlight the changes we've done on the suppression fee. And then also the shippers will continue validation. Transit conversion. Um, one of the rules we are signing in the system is the agent manager role. And the reason why we are drawing attention to this is that um, it's a role that has forced whoever owns this um, um, responsibility to be able to move documents that have been created by one staff to the other. So, that the, so let's say two of you are in the same establishment. One is on leave, right? One is on leave. The person who is there to pick up the document to I mean, the way they spend this, the person who works on the document, you, is the one who has access to the document at this point in time. If you are using different login, logins, I mean, using different uh, uh, login accesses, it's the person who has access to the document at every point in time. So if that person is not available to continue with the process, the agent manager just goes in and place the view and assigns to another officer to the person who the process. Right. So just take note there, especially this is an agent manager with that. You must be assigned to someone just to get that. The need arises. You can notice by now that um, anytime you log into the system, the first thing that pops up on, uh, on, uh, in front of you is a certain system update. I think currently what is running now is something on the on, uh, on the uh, free zones. Okay. So most of us don't read those notices. Interestingly. Two or three days after the news have been popped up, they can be there for a while. Somebody encounters a problem, then they come and call you, or they call the office to find out what they should do. In the meantime, the information on what to do is available. Because all we use to collect the information from, we are pleading. 
when you go onto the system and you see the notes that you got seen before, can you take your time to read it? After reading and closing off, right on the face of the computer, of the system, the computer, I'll show you the computer with this screen, where you have the um, no, no, uh, no, no, the notice section. If you click on it, you will find the information. Um, it's there. So you can pick up the notices from there. So these are notices. So these are notices. These are documents that you have attached on the system. This is before you will do anything at all. It's right in there. You realize the, the, uh, there's no login. Nobody has logged onto this system. Yet, so the information are being out. So just in case you need to go and refresh your memory on what you have posted, you can always go in and take that on the document. When you have finally logged in also, and you go through more information, information go to notice up there, you will find the documents that have listed that have been published, that have been published also in the, in the processes of your understanding. And then there's just a third place where you can find it. Still, the first one was an adjustment, then this one is an pop-up zoom. So there are three places where you can find the documents. It's on the face of the, the, uh, before you log in, under notices and under the pop-up zone to find all the documents listed. We have noticed over, point, over, over the period that... Can, can I just give uh, clarification? Uh, it's like, uh, when you talk about the agent, but it's like, if we're in the same company, she creates it. It's like, it's assigned to us. Or is it any? So somebody should be able to reassign it. It's essentially that what it is. Reassign. Now, when we create applications, there are two ways in which we create applications on the system. We can do what we call a preparation application and um, a consignment application. Now, the two ways different. We all know by now, at least if not for nothing at all, how to create an application or not to apply to process, you create um, um, an idea. You may end up creating a GSE. At least these two you will. Sometimes you have to add FDA and EPA. So these are four applications. So if you go through the consignment application process, you will have to create applications four times. So if you choose the consignment application, those are considered like consignment. The idea is a consignment application. EPA is a consignment application. GSA is a consignment application. FDC. So if you need to create the application, you go through the consignment application route. You have to create the application four times. If you have 20 items, you have to input the items 20 times and go through the process. As long as it takes. If it takes you 15 minutes to do that, you have to do this four times. That will be one hour. If you choose to go through the preparation application route, what the system does is that it helps you to just do a single input into the system. The items will intuitively tell you that as a result of the HSO you have inputted, you would need to create an FDA, which will be the correct HS code. You will have to pick, create an EPA if you pick the correct HS code. You need to create a GSE if you pick the correct HS code. IDF becomes something you add, but you don't have to to go and enter the items all over again. So we will always advise that when you are creating applications, use the preparation application process. Sometimes the challenge is that you may pick the wrong uh, HS code. When customers are done with the processes and they have to change an HS code, you have to come and enter the items all over again. So it is better to use the preparation application so that you can always go back to the application and just add the relevant application that you need to create and then proceed. So we we'll believe with you that um, you would always go in and use the preparation application because you can always go back and add any other relevant application. So if you want to, if after creating all the uh, mandatory applications, if there's a need for you to create, let's say, an exception application, you can always go back and add it. And it, it also, that also prevents you from now adding the items manually or something. Because then we generate the items on the system for you and only you complete that application and then you can proceed. So that's what we will advise. Can you take note of this one? I've already touched on this. So the single application is what you may want to use if you are, especially when you are dealing with uh, your master applications, a subject for consignments. That goes to a SAP, because I'm going to pick from a 
Even that one can still go through the routes of a push application. Please hold on a second. Are all of us on the system? Is it all of us who do the data entry? No. No. Because. <laughs> it's a refresher. Okay. It's a refresher. So. so, those of you who do not, when you get back, you try to take note of some of the things which are it's not so clear to you here. And then when you get back, you can inform the, the data entry people. We have also recently introduced um, an FDA, an FDA process uh, for personal effects. Um, because we noticed over time that FDA didn't have this process, so for those who are paying it, it also is a challenge. So what happens is that if you are paying personal effects, you need to make an FDA application, or something else with an FDA application. You choose the personal effects, I think it's FDA 15 or 16. You choose that one, and then FDA will go through the process. They will approve the documents. They will approve the documents for you. And then a fee is, is, is assigned. Then you go and pay. Once you pay, the um, uh, application will be approved automatically. So they approve the documents that are pending payment of the, of the, of the FDA fees. So what you have in there is an application that is submitted to FDA. Uh, they would have gone in and done the, uh, some level of approval. So it's spending payment, there's a few months to pay, make the payment, the patient will be to my account. So the account is a good thing, it's FD, it's FD15, and this FD16, there's also one for FD15, so the account is a good thing. So this is for personal effects. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now to the doctor's validation that we just introduced a few weeks back. So this is the doctor's validation that we just introduced a few weeks back. A mandate has been directed to be tracking. Mm -hmm. A mandate has been directed that um, appropriate or approved institutions should be tagging all these consignments under these suspect regimes moving from one location to the other with an electronic tracking device. So as to assist governments in securing revenue and also ensure that these consignments move to the uh, appropriate border points or warehouses in due time. Now this is where e-tracking comes in. And you might be wondering what e-tracking is. So e-tracking, we are a customized component of the ICOMs and the Ghana link. So essentially, there is Ghana link and there is ICOMs and e-tracking and we work hand in hand. So we are a customized component of ICOMs. That's has been given the mandate to perform these services to tag these consignments with an electronic tracking device so that we can appropriately monitor the movement of these consignments from point A to point B. Now, we are doing that essentially to, to, to ensure that we protect government revenue. Or it means that all these consignments within the suspense regimes, that is, when you work with real export, you must come for a tracking device to be tagged with your consignment. If you work with the transit regime, you must request for um, a device to be tagged to your consignment. If you work with the free zones and the warehousing regime as well, you must request for a device so that your consignment can be monitored from where they are going, from, from the location of goods to where they are going to. So uh, we are doing that, like I have said, to make sure that we are protecting government revenue and that these suspect regimes so that they get to their border points or the warehouses in a safe condition. Now, our operations are such that we make use of robust electronic devices that operate via GPS to send live feed locations, and also we can monitor your consignments, which provides our tracking system or tracking software with specific notifications so that if your goods or consignments are tampered with, we can move in with customs preventive to ensure that the appropriate thing is also being done. And also to ensure that your consignments are moving through the appropriate or the standard routes you are supposed to take to the various border points or the warehouses. Now, e-tracking essentially has provides a remote web-based um, tracking system. A remote web-based tracking system where we receive live feed location or live auditing of the locations where the consignments are passing and also tracking and monitoring your consignments. Now, our system provides us with notifications, certain alerts that we have customized into the system so that if your consignment or your goods are tampered with on the route, 
we can provide customs with the necessary information so that we can move to the site and ensure that the appropriate thing is actually being done. And also ensure that most importantly, your consignments are reaching the border points or the warehouses in the expected travel time as well. Our operations are not limited to only Tema and Accra. In the northern sector, we have Paga, Hamili, and Kulugumu as well. Whereas you come to the middle belt, we have operatives at Temali to provide such services as well. We also have um, Bonokro to the west, we have Bonokro, and we have Takrade and Telugu. When you come to the Volta region side, when you come to the Volta region side, we have um, Akalu and we have Aflao as well to provide these services. So our operations are scattered throughout Ghana so that you can get these services, provided you are moving your consignments from the warehouses to the border points, or from one border point to another border point before it leaves the country. So I'm going to run you through our operations through the warehouse and the free zone regime, or, or re-export, then I come to the transit regime as well. So essentially, if you want to request for our um, devices, whilst BOE has been released, you go to any of our offices and pre present your declaration documents. Then our operating over there is going to validate or probably verify the information on your BOE documents through the ICOMS. And once that verification has been done, depending on the number of sub-consignments, depending on the number of sub-consignments being we generate an invoice for you for you to pay through our banks. We've also recently done an update which I'll come I'll come to. Get it to the end of this trans uh, get it to the end of this presentation. So you pay those, you pay for the number of sub consignments through the invoice we have generated at the bank. Then you present the information or you present your bank slips or the receipts back to the to the agent, or that is back to our operative. Then we will make another check to ensure that the appropriate payments have been done. Then with the warehouse is re, re export or free zone. Regime, we will provide you with an ICOMS manifest information form where you fill necessary information regarding your description of your goods, your information, basic information, including the agency name and you, your agency, your name and your contact, including the driver's information as well. That is the vehicle number, the driver's name, and the driver number as well. The location, the current location of your goods, and the exit point of your goods including the resident warehouse office. The data entry will do that verification in iPhones as well and key the appropriate data in our tracking software. So it's more or less like we transfer information from the iPhones into our tracking software to make sure that the information matches. So when this is done, you will be allocated with a device number. Now you will go to the transit yard or the location of goods. So by the time you would get there, the devices are already available for our field officers who are there and waiting for the consignments to be tapped with the devices. Now you have to also pass through customs to complete your printout, and that will be the customs movement sheet. We do a number of verifications concerning the device number and the track number that is allocated to you on your printout as well to ensure that we can tag the appropriate display. Uh, consignment with the allocated device. So the, the field officer would do that tagging and take certain reports on the ground as well. Now, when the tagging is done completely, when the tagging is done, the work eventually moves to our monitoring team, who I mentioned have been trained to interpret the notification and the alerts that we get from our tracking software. So that is where we begin to track the consignment, wherever they stop on the road, wherever they get to. And our tracking system also provides us historical data on wherever your consignment has passed, as long as we have tagged them with the tracking device. So it provides historical data, monitoring wherever there is any anomaly in the form of deviation or diversions. We get the notification and we raise alarms to customs and we move into uh, the location of the goods. So, it's, 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 a whole, it's a whole process that starts from you uh, retargeting your consignment with the, with the tracking device up to the point where it gets to the border point. And customs will give the directive for us to disengage it after they are satisfied with the necessary procedures that is carried out at the customs border point. So you hear me mentioning customs a number of times because we are working in collaboration with them. So 
just like any other project, we have done our SWOT analysis and we have realized areas where we can improve and we have actually done the improvement. So I'm just going to run it through, I'm just going to run through them quickly on the updates that we have done on new tracking. So we have procured new tracking devices and other logistics for warehousing and transit operations. And this is essentially to add up to the number of tracking devices that we have because in the event where request increases or in the event where you are clearing more consignments, then we have to also be available to meet those demands. So essentially we have maximized our capacity to meet those demands as well. We have also increased the stock of specific devices for different um, suspension regimes. Now with the um, Certain consignments that are moving from Adians or from the airports realize that they are relatively smaller. And also for the cars, new cars that are being transported to the border points or to certain warehouses or from the warehouses to the border points, we realize that our big devices are capable of scratching the car. So we procured relatively smaller and even far smaller sized devices which would not deface the, the, the surface of the, of the consignment. So we've added that improvement as well so that we can also protect not only your consignment for moving from point A to point B, but also to maintain the beauty of your consignment as well. We have also employed extra personnel and added more fleets to our, 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 our logistics. So the extra personnel is supposed to assist in meeting those demands, moving from point A to point B to ensure that we are meeting demands on time. We have also added the fleets, that is pickups and smaller cars, so that in areas where we have to move, or we have to, longer distances where we have to move, or even if we have to move quickly, the cars can drive our operators and even sometimes use the agents to the location of the route so we can affix the devices on the consignments. We have also, and this is the update I was mentioning when I talked about payments. We have recently included the merchant ID that is linked to our Ghana Link accounts. So there are instances where you don't need to go to the bank to form those long queues where you could have to use man hours to do other productive stuff. So we have included a merchant ID uh, that you can actually effect payment from at the, at the comfort of your homes or wherever you are. So the merchant name is Ghana Link Network Services Limited and the ID number is over there. We will be sharing the slides as well to anybody who requests it so you can have all these information at just by the comfort of your homes. So we have also experienced some challenges. Just like any other project, there are some challenges and improvements. And with these challenges, we have outlined that these are some of the major challenges that we are experiencing. We have outlined them in seeking you, the agency's help, the customs help as well. So I'm going to run through the challenges. Number one and foremost is the movement of these GP transit vehicles to the workshop without officially informing customs or informing items as well. So this one, you see, let me just create a picturesque um, um, example. We have cars moving from safe point to the various border points, right? Now these cars are supposed to be tracked because duties haven't been paid on them. Now we track them and they go to the workshops without informing us, without informing customers. One, they have deviated from the appropriate routes they are supposed to use because they are going to a certain point. Secondly, they are also holding our, our, our logistics in the form of devices and cables. Because these cables you see with the devices, they are specially engineered that if there is any temperament, there is any vibration, there is any happen, there is anything that happens to your consignment. These cables are electronic. They provide information to the tracking device, which we, which, which we get as alerts or notifications on our tracking system. Then we report to customers. So when these vehicles go to the workshops without informing us, without informing customers, then they stay there beyond the expected travel time. And the travel time for these consignments to get to the border points is 10 days. And I believe from my little experience with logistics and law college, 10 days is far enough for consignments to, far enough for vehicles to move from here to the border point. Essentially, it can't be done in three to four days. So when they go to the, when they go to the work, workshops for this very long period without informing customers and us, then they are keeping our devices, they are keeping our logistics, and effect, effectively reducing the number of logistics that we can use to feed the agencies, other agencies, within a short period. So we are pleading with the agencies that if you are clearing a DP transaction, if you will be going to the workshop right after clearance, then you have to make a formal notification to um, customs. And customs will also um, minute it in the IMS of items. 
so that wherever, whichever be tracking operative, wherever we are, whether you are in this country or a different country, you can easily log on to the icons and, and read the comments attached to that particular video. That this video is going to the workshop. That way we can also monetize at that workshop. And whatever whatever necessary assistance we need to provide you, the agencies, we can provide for you from the workshop. Now there's also this where there's the failure of the use of icons platform for the change of route and the change of track. Now, there is a part in the icons where you can do your amendments when you want to change the route, right? Or you formally write to the customs commissioner headquarters so that they will do the necessary verification and the necessary go through the necessary procedure to assist you with your change of route. There are instances where we will, we will be tracking then the consignment which is supposed to go to handling is ending up at Monoclo or is even ending up at Paga without the appropriate change of route. We check the icons and there is no information to that effect. Yes, we have seen that currently, I have even re I received a notification over here about a suspected deviation where a transaction was supposed to go to Hamidi and it is on the Paga route. So usually when, when this happens, we notify the customs closest to the uh, location of the goods and our operative also moves in with pre preventive. You inspect the document and it's not supposed to be on that sheet. Now, what is supposed to happen is you need to do the amendment in ICOMS and also report to um, report to the commissioner of customs that this is what you intend to do. You want um, um, a change of route. Then you'll go through the necessary procedures. After this is done, we can also verify from ICOMS whether the appropriate uh, change of route has been done. Now, if it has been done, then we would have to recompute the trip sending in our system so that whoever is tracking it, whoever has access to our system, can see that okay, the change of route has been done and it's on the appropriate route. Otherwise, wherever your consignment is passing beyond your original expected route, we will send the diversion for a deviation. And in that case, we have to stop you to make sure that the appropriate thing is being done. And you know that time is money, so your time will effect effectively be wasted as well. So once you do the appropriate thing or the right thing from the onset, you have a smooth um, operation from your side, from our side, and we also save time for customs as well. It's also the same process for the change of track. We have instances where the tracks may have been broken down or they are parked at a place for some time. We monitor and we realize that this is the situation, so we raise alarm to customs. When we move in, the vehicle is damaged, they are, they have started, they are trying to They've brought in another vehicle to ensure the change of track. So in most cases, they want us to disengage the devices. Then we let them know that, no, this is not the appropriate process. You have to write customs to the closest location of the goods. Then they would relay the information and the appropriate procedure will be followed. When this is done, custom will also be it in the IMS. They will realize that, well, the change of track is being done because of an accident or because of a legitimate reason why the track cannot move from point A to point B. So these are few, some of the challenges that we are actually getting on facing on the ground currently where tracks are, are tracks may be damaged, agents may not know the appropriate uh, procedure to follow. So I think after this presentation going forward, you might have an idea or you will certainly have an idea of what to do when your track is damaged. If there is a need to change the track, kindly report to customs closest to the location of your goods. Then they will, they will pass you through the procedure that you are supposed to take. Then eventually, E tracking would also be notified so that we can do all the necessary changes or the, all the best follow through all the necessary procedures and also ensure that this procedure is fed into the items. But this is where we would begin to customs to ensure that we follow through with this particular procedure where we feed information into the items for e tracking to also see as well. There is also this really, really interesting challenge that we are facing, which is clearly from the agents, agency's side. Once we have realized that there are instances, a number of instances where agents will go through the hassle and bustle to pay for devices, go through all the necessary procedures, and not come for devices. Now, what happens is, after the third day, right, we recirculate these devices into the system. So after the third day, if you came back for your device that was originally be allocated to you, you will not get it you would have to go through the same lengthy process of getting devices, which is also going to waste your own time. So once you have requested and paid for devices, and the devices have been made available, try and come on time so that the devices can be fixed on your consignment. So 
you can move your consignment to the border police. If there is any event where, let's say, a breakdown, even in transit yard or even at the various warehouses, it's appropriate that you would also notify e tracking or notify the customs at the location of your goods. And they would further notify us as well that this is the situation with your consignment so that we can make special arrangements for that particular device. Otherwise, you would, we would recirculate those devices into the system after the third day. We would have to go through that same lengthy process. And it's quite frustrating for agencies sometimes. So kindly come for your devices that have been allocated to you so we can tap into your consignment so we can leave. If there is any legitimate reason why you can't come that particular within that third day, kindly notify us, formally notify us in our office as well. Then there is this also very unique one to especially the uh, loose cargoes. The loose cargoes, uh, the, like, the lunch trains which have tapolis. There is, there are tapolis, you see the tapolis have these rings at the edges of them, of the tapolis where we have these long electronic cables we can wind through them and properly and tightly affix your consignment to the, uh, cargo, to, the, to, the, to the cargo track. Now, like I mentioned, these electronic cables are not just any ordinary cables. They are circuitry cables which, when affixed to the devices, they provide information as to whether your consignment has been um, tampered with in any manner. They also provide other information regarding anybody who might have tried to cut um, the cable to have access to, illegally have access to your consignment. So we need your tablet to have these these rings around them at the edges so that we can properly wind the, the long electronic cable through them so that we can affix or we can secure the cable or the consignment the cable into the track properly. <coughs> Then there's also this incident where we have tracks that are roadworthy but are not are realistically not worthy to carry your consignments. Now, these tracks do not have certain books around them where after winding or after affixing the cables to your cargo that we can tie or we can we can support the, 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 the consignment or the cables with. If you have taken particular notice of your vehicles or the loose cargoes which carry or even the flatbeds which carry your consignments to the border point. They are supposed to have certain books around them so that when the so that when the cables are wound around your cables, now we can also affix them to those hooks. Now this allows us to secure your consignments properly before we can affix our devices onto them. So if your track is, is actually roadworthy, it might not be worth it to secure your consignment. You might be thinking as long as it's able to carry it, that is it. But then we need to properly secure your consignment with those cables around those hooks to ensure that we are safeguarding your goods which are moving to the border points. So this, these are problems that we would wish that you, the agencies, would assist us in solving so that we can protect your consignment protect government revenue up to the point where we get to the destination of the goods. We've also made some, we've also come up with some controls and we've also come up with uh, certain observations and controls. We realize that for some reasons, some drivers have this knack of damaging our devices. I don't know if they think that once they, uh, once they use a certain number of force or they try to tamper with the consignment, we will not notice it through our tracking system. We do notice it. There are also other instances where the cables are destroyed through uh, its journey to the various destination points. So what we have come up with is a fee of a thousand seeds for the devices if it is destroyed. Now, once the devices or the cables are destroyed and get to the border point, we do our necessary due diligence. And once we realize that it is the fault of the driver, you pay a thousand seeds for the destroyed devices, which we will retrieve. Now, the cables also, we pay, you pay a fee of 500 cities once it is destroyed. Now, to also prevent people from, or prevent agencies from hoarding our devices or keeping our devices beyond the expected travel time, a fee of 15 cities is being charged per day for the number of uh, days that the devices are kept outside the travel time. That is, after 10 days, if there is no report on any legitimate reason why the devices or the cables are being kept, a fee is charged per day 
outside the travel time for the number of days the device is secured is active until it gets to the destination point. So those are essentially our operations under the tracker that I have presented to you. And if you have any questions, they are really welcome. When you do NOC, you have to apply to a bank listing. You use the expected team. Now we apply for the NOC. Now the 30 days has expired. We extend it. So I told you that the Bank of Ghana will hold the exporter who use, which we use the acting in bank transaction to retrieve their whatever they want to. Instead of giving us we say that we should have to go and come and settle these LOCs on our system. That's my issue. Okay. Okay. The problem with not extend that is this. For the exporter who has gone into non-conformity, mm -hmm. that exporter cannot go to another agency and process an expert. Once you go to the agent, the system will tell you that there's value to non conformity. So the bank will have to hold the But you came to custom. That's what I didn't come to custom. Yes. <laughs> that's that's what I have to understand. It's the agent who came to customs, not the exporter. Because you, you see, the list that has come out has got a time lapse. And of course, if you don't do it, when the time comes, they'll do what? They'll block you. And when they block you, you come to us. But we want the solution to this. We don't want the end of June to come, July, July to come, and then our members will be coming and this and that and that. So please, let's take note of it. When we leave here, see to all the declarations that duties have been paid, and do the needful. However, if there are any interest charge or whatever it is, we will also help you to have that interest charge. But if you know you've not paid the duties, and for that reason, they have to call for that duty, and any other charges comes up, definitely will let you pay.